hello again. Now we've got a very exciting few lessons on our board today. We are going to use Yepo paper. Y-U-P-O, Yepo paper, which is a very different paper from the normal watercolor paper, such as the arches that we used for the leaves. The Yepo paper has a plastic feel, and when we apply the color, it, the water actually gets absorbed into the atmosphere rather than into the paper, so it takes a long time to dry but it does all sorts of wonderful magic shapes and it does its own thing. If you have a look at the part I've already colored so that we could get a, a bit of a move on today, you can see that there are all sorts of funny squiggles and shapes and that is what watercolor does on this wonderful Yippo paper. I'm going to show you two completed paintings. This is called The Girl, the Girl in the Straw Hat. And you can see the shapes in the background. This is all done on Yepo paper to make a very interesting look. This is daisies on Yepo paper. Again, I've dropped in all the colors and I'll show you how we came up with the daisy shapes and colors. But you can see all the interesting spatter marks. You know how to do those and you will see how the paper mixes itself on the paper and then dries as it gets absorbed into the atmosphere and this is what we have. So what we need is a sheet of Yopo paper cut into four because we don't want to start with a very large sheet. We use our same paint brushes I'm using an ordinary palette of color. I'm not going to use the triad that we used on the leaves. I'm just going to use random colors now to show you how they mix on the Yippo paper. But also what I've got now is a little dish of coarse salt. This is kosher salt, but you can use sea salt as well. This is what we're going to use for the texture. And then I've got a little pot of cold water in which I dropped one little drop of dishwashing soap. That is actually only used when you want the paint to stick to the paper. So we'll just put it aside for the moment. You need your jug of cold water like you did for the leaves. You can do any abstract shape for this if you feel like it. I'm going to let you decide what you want to draw or paint. You can you do circles and squares and see how they come out with a background like this. I went into the garden and I picked some of these lovely Japanese anemones and some Alstroemeria. Just, I'm going to do flowers on the yippo for you today. Just pop them into water so they don't wilt. I used my pencil and I did a very light drawing of what I could see and I hope you do that, although I told you you don't have to do that today. Just a light drawing and I wanted to establish my focal point. Remember the focal point is on one of the thirds in our paper. And I've decided to make this anemone, this white flower, our focal point. So I've used different colors around it because I want it to actually pop out. And this is how we build up the colors. I did this side of the painting. I just randomly dropped in color like this. I'm sorry. We painted with water first, which I'm going to do for you here. And you can see the water doesn't stick to the paper. It's sort of, it's like work, working on greased glass. It just leaves little holes and bubbles and splatters. And you just paint around your pencil shapes, paint around your squares and circles or whatever shape you've decided to do. Don't paint inside the shapes at this stage. There, I've wet the whole paper now. 
I'm going to just use colors and I'll show you what happens, the exciting transformation on your paper. I'm using a very dark pink called Alizarin Crimson. But you can use that perylene red that you had. Just look how the paint is moving already. It just moves as though it was alive on the paper. I'm going to use the big brush again. I'm going to cover the whole top of this page now. You don't have to be careful like you would be if you were painting on something else because you want this to be randomly covered. And then I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and I'm just going to drop color in here and you're going to watch what happens. I'm using a much bolder yellow than the Hansen yellow. I'm actually using a cadmium yellow. If you have some, use that or just use whatever yellow you've got. And I'm just splattering this around the image that I've drawn. Now I'm going to tilt the paper a little bit and you can watch how it slides around the paper. It doesn't matter if some comes off, but you, you're actually using your edges here. Look how the white of the flowers is, is starting to pop out. Can you see? Now I want to get back to my focal flower where the paint has already started to dry around the edges. I want to use a grey. So to make a grey, I've mixed all three of those colours together and I've made a lovely soft grey. But it's going to be darker than the rest because it is the focal point. Again, I will tilt it just to let the, the paint mingle. The other colors can come down and mingle with it. Isn't that exciting? Now I'm going to drop some more color into the focal point area. I'm going to do a different blue this time, almost a turquoise blue. Just a little bit, because I want this flower to pop out. And remember what I told you, if you use a color on this side, you must always just help it a little bit and just drop a little bit of color in on the other side as well of that same color to balance your painting. It's hardly noticeable, but it's definitely there. Then I'm going to drop Another deep pink on top of that Prussian blue, which is mi mixing to make a purple on the paper. And I'll take a little bit over to the other side. If the paint has dried too much to mingle, you can put a little bit of water, wet it first with water, just a small area, and drop in the paint, the purple paint. And then you tilt the paper again. You can try and keep your edges clean, but if they do get covered, all you have to do is just use a tissue or your Q-tip and push it off that paper and it will become snow white again. So that's how we're going to make the stems. Just keep to your drawing and push the paint off with your Q-tip. Dry it off as much as you can 
and push it again. Now we're going to start drawing the flowers and the leaves on the side where it has already dried. This is going to take a long time. 